It's very disenchanting about, I, I would have to say honestly, that I no longer think I am living this, the country that I thought I was living in a year ago this time. I didn't think that a country that elected Barack Obama twice, that in that country so many people would vote for someone who has been that openly bigoted, nationalistic, xenophobic, everything else. I think it's going to take a long time to recover this. I think from this, I think it's going to be a lot of self-examination, and I think it's America looks like a very different place, even if Trump loses but gets 45 percent of the vote. And so you said this is it, it's xenophobia, it's bigotry. I mean, do you think that is the core of his appeal? There's different diagnoses of why he is popular. Some is it's straight up racism. Some people say uh, he's, he's he's helping the, the whites that have been you know passed over by technology and the economy. Um, my theory is people like people who are on TV. They like a TV character. Well, that's clearly the source of his celebrity. And you know, I had P Peter Sagal on on my show. He was really good, but he said, you know, while while we were watching Breaking Bad, America was watching The Apprentice. Right. And he was famous and had a following that I think many of us in the elite, pardon the expression, didn't fully recognize or appreciate. And you were alluding to this, right? There is one of the dialogues going on about Trump is the media and the elite media saying, how did we miss this? What did, what did we get wrong here? Yeah. But I think in terms of his appeal, it's it's a classic kind of demagoguery. It's a classic kind of strongman politics where he's he's going to people who are suffering from an economic transition, from a poor economic recovery, and saying, you're hurting, and these people are to blame. And it's the Chinese, and it's the Mexicans, and it's the Muslims. And he's giving people a, a, a simple answer that's wrong, but it's how demagogues often rise to power.